There's a tech founder out there who is extremely badass, who you've probably never even heard of. How badass? Well, he runs a $30 billion company with a team of only 15 people while traveling the world. He's literally given Vladimir Putin the middle finger and had to escape Russia Edward Snowden style. He's also been known to throw $100 bills as paper airplanes out of windows. And he does it all while staying in great shape. So who do you get if you basically combine the multiple unicorn Elon Musk with someone who started a social network as big as Mark Zuckerberg, a little Edward Snowden on the side with the testosterone level and physique of Jeff Bezos. You get Pavel Durov, Russia's best tech founder of Telegram, and VK, which is the Facebook of Russia. It's massive. And in a world of cookie cutter tech companies, Telegram actually stands for something, and that's freedom of communication. And no, this is not a cheesy company slogan like don't be evil or build awesome things. Pavel actually means this shit to an extent where he literally gave Putin the middle finger after Putin was asking for the private information of his users. But let's back up to before Pavel got on Putin's hit list. What is the origin story and why does this guy care about privacy so much so as you know Pavel is Russian but he grew up outside of Russia this is important because in his 20s he noticed this app that was booming called Facebook but at the time there was no Facebook in Russia so what he basically did was make exactly Facebook for the Russian market and call it VK now it wasn't just Pavel alone Luckily, he had a genius brother who had won math and programming competitions. So you can think of this kind of like a Steve Jobs, Steve Wozniak relationship. Now, VK basically blew up in not just Russia, but the countries around it, known as the post-Soviet countries. And Pavel himself, well, he got pretty famous for pulling stunts, like throwing $100 bills outside of his office window and having a pretty edgy VK page. But he didn't really get into trouble until the Ukrainian Revolution of 2016. Now, if you don't know, this was a legit revolution, and it's when this Russia-Ukraine conflict that's in the news actually started. To give you a super quick overview, what happened was there was protesting in the capital of Ukraine, Kyiv, where I used to live for over a year, and that escalated to such an insane degree where the government actually left office. But the counter reaction to this was Russia taking Crimea and conflict starting in the east of Ukraine. So where does VK fit in this? Well, Russia was looking for someone to blame for the government collapsing in Ukraine. So they wanted to get the personal details of the protesters who made this happen. Being the largest social network in Ukraine at the time, naturally, the Russian government went to VK because they had all this data on the back end, which would expose the protesters. But guess what Pavel said? He posted a picture of a dog and then a middle finger on his page. And here's the thing, no one does that in Russia. All the companies roll over and submit to the government because if you don't, well, they decided Pavel, well, now he had to go. Needless to say, the government was not having it and they started to try to pin stuff on him. They tried to claim he hit a police officer with his car when he didn't even drive and they also sent a SWAT team to his home office. Now, eventually the Russian government, they did win. What happened was since VK was a public company, the government did a corporate takeover where they bought a lot of shares and they voted Pavel out and he was basically forced to sell his stake in the company for a lot less than it was worth. And once this happened, he left Russia for good. Now, it's pretty messed up to get pushed out of your own company and country at the same time, but this whole thing inspired him in terms of bringing privacy and freedom to not just the Russian people, but to basically everyone, because these are problems he directly encountered. And that's exactly why he started Telegram, which is an encrypted messenger app that is truly private and no government can really access. It's also extremely snappy and just works great if you've ever used it. Durav is on record saying, for, for, for me and for most of my team, WhatsApp, most. Now to build this, Pavel's brother Nikolai wrote an MTP encryption algorithm from scratch to power the whole thing. You might know about cryptocurrency where you have a private and a public key, and the private key is basically what decrypts the information, and in the crypto world, that would be stealing all your money. Now the way this key exchange works that the MTP encryption algorithm is based on is both users 
have a public key and by having access to both of the public keys, you can then calculate the private key. It's kind of like turning two keys at the same time to unlock the nuclear launch button. Even if someone is reading the data I'm sending to you, they don't know what it says because they don't have your key. Now, why did I bother explaining that even though I just lost 50% of my audience? It's important because once Telegram gained traction in Russia, the Russian government was asking for those keys so they could read people's messages. This might feel familiar. You might notice a trend here. And what do you think Telegram said? Well, naturally, they said F no. And since this time Russia could not forcefully take over Telegram, they banned Telegram in Russia. But banning Telegram made people want to use it even more in Russia. And it started the Svoboda internet freedom movement in Russia, kind of a countercultural thing going on there. And funny part is as many times as they try to block the Telegram IP addresses, they keep changing the servers by using AWS, Microsoft Azure servers. So the government could never really block them effectively. Finally, after a few years, the government actually reversed the ban altogether because it came out that the government officials in Russia were all using Telegram themselves. Telegram is one of the only unmonitored ways Russian citizens can communicate and speak freely about controversial subjects. Two modern examples are the Belarusian protests being organized, which went down a few years ago. These were entirely organized through a Telegram channel. More recently, the rapper Morgenstern has been using Telegram to communicate directly with his fans after being persecuted for making some political comments in the public sphere. <laughs> Telegram takes this freedom of information principle so seriously that for a time the terrorist group ISIS was using Telegram and Pavel Durov, well, he defended that saying they would just find another platform to communicate anyway. Since then though, they have cracked down a bit on more controversial channels and subjects, but anything political, well, that's always gonna be fair game on Telegram. At this point in time, Telegram is the only messenger app I try to use. It's got 500 million users worldwide. Really good cross-platform sync from desktop to mobile. There's Telegram bots that are really cool and, and Telegram groups are just generally great. But even with Telegram's massive success, it hasn't been smooth sailing. They never took investments. It's been self-funded by Pavel Durov. And the downside of that is when you have 500 million users, the servers are quite expensive to run. And it's very hard to get investment when you're basically a cursed company that no investor wants to touch. Otherwise, you're gonna make Russia pretty angry. Now, a little bit more about Pavel himself. Nowadays, he's posted up in Dubai. He's in with some pretty high-level people there. He also only wears black, is a vegetarian, and doesn't drink, but that's all just normal idiosyncratic tech founder stuff. Now, as of today, Telegram has somewhere between 15 and 20 employees. And while they're based in Dubai for a time, they were just traveling the world together, which is very cool because they're operating this massive billion dollar company, just like it's a really small startup still. And I'll say again, we need more truly different companies like this because that's where innovation really comes from. So with that said, I hope you enjoyed the story of Telegram. You can still follow Pavel on Instagram, although he hasn't been active in a while. He is pretty shredded. And when you're there, you can follow me too, at Aaron Jack. I'm trying to post some countercultural tech content there, as well as my life traveling around and trying to start new tech businesses, as well as running our coding bootcamp. So, with that said, hope you enjoyed the story. Pavel Dura, I'll catch you soon.